Hello YouTube and welcome back to the conservatory. So as you can see, following on from last week's video, I've done a bit more stripping down. Uh, didn't bother recording it though because uh, I think there's only so much time you guys want to sit and watch me uh, undoing nuts and bolts and looking at stuff going, mm, okay. So I didn't bother recording it, but we've got quite a bit more off. The, the front brakes are all off. I've bled that down, taken that all off. Uh, the radiator, all the plumbing, cooling system that's all off and the electrics is all disconnected as is the, the rear light but I can't really go much further because I want to do a bit of mocking up of some of the parts that I'm going to swap on so in this video we're going to look at front end swaps and what the various options are for, for upgrading the front end on the on the CV1 you may also notice uh, the bike is up on the, the green box it's, uh, it's had its wheels removed and a couple of bits of wood put underneath it in, in their place and that's now securely fixed down to the workbench so fingers crossed this shouldn't go anywhere so uh, yeah so let me let me wander around and uh, we will have a look at the front forks and the various options for them okay here we are focusing on, in on the the front end of the CB1 now the, the standard CB forks are fairly basic they're a damping rod fork um, they've got no adjustment whatsoever and you will probably find that the the springs in them are a little bit soft certainly for us uh, older slightly chubbier westerners who definitely weigh more than the 20 something japanese that this bike was originally intended for um, so there is quite a bit of scope for uh, improvement on these forks now, inherently, there's nothing actually wrong with the forks on the CB1. They're a 41mm diameter stanchion, which is still a pretty common size used today on, on your sort of more budget commuter bikes, you know, things like the CB500 range. They're all using basically the same fork. Uh, slightly bigger discs on them, um, and updated calipers, but otherwise the front end is all much of a muchness. Um, so, yeah, it's not a bad starting point but it could certainly be improved as I said they're a damping rod fork now the problem with a damping rod fork aside from the fact that these ones have got no adjustability is that they rely entirely on a couple of holes down the bottom in the damping rod there to control the flow of oil and therefore the damping in them and they're non adjustable and what that means is when you're riding along, the forks will respond and can only move the same amount of fluid whether you hit gentle bumps or you hit a really jarring one. It cannot adapt to respond differently to those different conditions. Um, so modern forks have moved on a bit since this, then and that's the route we're going to take. However, doesn't necessarily mean you have to get rid of the standard forks. They can be improved for not a lot of money. So the first thing you probably want to do is put some uprated springs in them. Um, as standard, I think they're somewhere around about 0.7 kilograms per, per millimetre squared is the rating on them, which is way, way too soft for us, us Westerners, like I said. Uh, you probably want to go for something in the region of about 0.8 kilograms per millimetre squared. So that will give you a stiffer spring. and It means the bike will sag less when you first sit on it. Um, and, and the front end won't be quite so overwhelmed by the rider. So just putting heavier springs, give them a good service and some fresh fork oil and, and they'll be pretty good to go. Um, if you want to go the next step further, you can actually put emulators in and they go in between the forks and you modify the damping rods to suit. Now that's a really good budget option and it does give you a bit of, a bit of adjustability in the forks as well. Um, and they, they act kind of like a, uh, a cartridge type fork. The only downside with, with emulators is you kind of have to fish them out, adjust them, put them back in again. Um, they, they do have their, their disadvantages. But having said that, I am going to look at the um, emulators in a bit more detail in a later video because I've got a set that I'm probably going to fit on the NC23 race bike uh, because at the moment that has just got the standard front end, which is basically the same as the CV1 front end. So, um, yeah, so 
give them a good service, fresh oil, heavier springs, emulators, and then the final modification you might want to make is up the top here, replace the fork cap with one that has adjustable preload, and you can steal those from all sorts of bikes with 41mm um, forks. So for instance, the CB500s, like I said, NC29s, NC30s, they were where we used to nick them from. Uh, even the VFR800 uh, fork tops will fit. So just have a look around on eBay. You can get Chinese ones. Not so sure if I'd want to go down that route. I'd rather have some genuine Honda ones, to be honest. Uh, because if they pop out, then yeah, catastrophic. So that's your front, sta your, your standard front forks. Like I said, for most people, a set of emulators, the oil and heavier springs will be more than enough for what you want to do. However, I intend to do a couple of track days on this when it's finished. So I want to take things a little bit further. So the, the next logical step is to change the forks out completely for these. A set of CBR600 F3 forks. Now the CBR600 F3 was made from, let me check my notes, 1995 to 98. Um, and these, these forks actually came on an NC23 track bike that uh, I've stripped for spares and I was thinking about putting these on on the, uh, the little blue NC23 so I'm still debating whether to go the emulator route or whether to put these on. Now the big advantage these have over the CV1 forks is if we zoom in on the front you can see you can adjust your preload here by twisting this but you can also adjust your compression and rebound. Now the problem with these forks is it's kind of a compromise because it adjusts the compression and the rebound at the same time. You can't separate them. Um, but it's a step in the right direction. So like I said, these may be going on the, the little blue NC23, uh, but the thing I don't like about them is they, they stick up above the, the yokes by about that much. Um, or I might just go the emulator route, I don't know yet. The other advantage with doing this front end swap is of course you go for twin discs. So straight away you get caliper mounts on both sides. Now the CBR600 F3 basically used a pair of the same calipers as are fitted as standard to an NC23. I think the caliper carriers might be a little bit different because obviously the CBR600 only has 296mm discs, I think. Well, they may be 276, but uh, given that the NC23 is 296, I think that's a fairly safe bet that that's what they are. So you can't use the standard NC27 front wheel and disc. You are going to have to source yourself another wheel, either a CBR600 or, or an NC23 wheel would be quite good because it will give you the, the three spoke pattern. Uh, VTR 1000 wheels are quite popular because they're quite a bit lighter. Um, so yes, so not only can you upgrade your suspension, but you can fit twin discs at the same time if you fit the F3 forks. So that's one option. And of course, they're 41mm diameter, so they will slide straight up in the standard yokes. And if I hold them up against the CV1 front end, you can see they're actually a little bit longer than the CB1 forks. So you can get away with keeping the standard clip-ons. In fact, if you wanted to, you could even put a little spacer underneath the clip-ons and just lift the, the, uh, the handlebar height up a bit as well. So lots of advantages with those, but you will need the forks, the brakes, the master cylinder, and a different front wheel and discs. So it's not just a case of chucking the forks in. So that's one option. The other option is let's go for something really chunky. Set of fire blade front forks. So again, you've got preload adjustment at the top. You've actually got compression adjustment. And down the bottom here, I don't know how clearly you can see this because the forks are painted black but there is actually a rebound adjuster at the bottom as well. So you can separate the, the adjustment between the compression and the rebound. 
Um, they're a bit chunkier as well. They look a bit more meaty and solid. Um, they're actually a 45 mil diameter stanchion. Uh, I am going to compare the weight and see how much heavier they are. I don't know how they compare. Um, but yeah, I think for looks alone, the CV or the Fireblade front end conversion is probably well worth considering. Um, of course, you will need a fresh set of yokes as well from the Fireblade. And also, because the bottoms are a bit chunkier than the CB1 bottoms, you will also need to get yourself the Fireblade spindle. Now there are two versions of Fireblade front end you can use. Here, and you can see, oops, tripping over everything, and you can see this one's got the silver bottom, and you can see the actual rebound adjuster better on these. So I bought an entire front end from I think it was a 96 or a, a 95 fireplace. And but the thing is with the, the 96-95 fire blade is they also had 296 millimeter diameter um, front discs. So again, as well as the forks the yokes, spindle, you're going to need the calipers and a different front wheel. I kind of fancied keeping the CB1 front wheel and the CB1 single disc. So for that reason, I went out and bought another set of forks. These ones that I originally showed you. Now for two years, 1998 and 1999, um, Honda decided for whatever reason they were going to upgrade the disc diameter to 310 mil which is the same as the, the CB1. So after all that waffling I've decided I'm going to go for a 99, 98 to 99 fireblade front end. Now I know a lot of people are doing upside down front end swaps and that probably would have been the way to go to be honest uh, in this day and age but I haven't really had a chance to go around measuring forks off uh, modern bikes to find a set that would be suitable so I know I know people have put all sorts on but uh, I kind of like the Fireblade forks. <clears throat> the only downside with the Fireblade forks is they are about 25 30 mil shorter than the CV1 forks so that means we can't mount a set clip-ons on there so I'm gonna have to do something with the handlebar but we will look at that at a later date. So there we go, there's the options for your, your front fork conversion. Um, so there's only one thing to do now, and that is I want to strip the existing front end off, fit the Fireblade front end, see how everything works. Uh, I want to check things like the lock stops still work. Um, I want to actually see how much space I've got and how much the, the forks need to sit up and down in the yokes. So before I start stripping it off, or once I've got the front wheel out, before I go too far with stripping off, I do need to take some measurements just to make sure that when I put the fire blade forks back in, we still keep the same distance to the center of the wheel, wheel spindle from the, the bottom yoke. So I don't end up lifting the front end up back or, or dropping it down too much so I can keep the steering geometry the same. So without any further ado, no more waffling. Let's get this front end off.
and as usual put the bolts back in the little bag for later use now these are a bit corroded they are just standard plated bolts so I'll be replacing them with stainless steel but again it's worth bagging them up and putting in the box so at least I can measure them when uh, I come to choose the replacements in stainless okay let's get this clip on off Now there should be snap rings around the top, but they seem to be missing on this one. That's as far as I want to go. I now want to start taking some measurements. So it's 473 millimeters from the top of the, the spindle hole to the bottom of the, the bottom yoke. So let me just grab a pen and paper and make a note of all that. <clears throat> and actually now that I've got the clip on off we should be able to yeah, compare the length of the forks so you can see straight away that the, if I zoom you in a bit so hopefully you can see, there we are, the fire blade forks are are a little bit shorter so that means we're not going to be able to fit the clip-ons on the top of them but not the end of the world taking the forks out. Okay, before I take the forks out, now would be a good time to tackle the ignition key. I'm hoping that will work with the fire blade forks. The uh, ignition barrel is held on from a couple of Torx bits. They're usually a bit of a pig to get off. So. So there's usually lock tight on them and like I said they're about the only fixing on the whole bike that uses a force head. Obviously makes sense for security reasons. And certainly a lot easier to get at them and undo things while the whole assembly is clamped to the bike.
and there you can see the hopefully the the yellow on there that is the the thread lock right there's our ignition barrel which we can play with a bit later on okay now top nut and we'll take the top yoke off done my usual trick putting the socket down somewhere and forgetting where I put it See the front end of this is all going to go into storage and will probably resurface on another CB1 that needs it at some point. And there's the little frame that holds the headlight. Again, that's going in the spares box. And I'm not quite sure, A, what headlight I'm going to use, and B, how I'm going to fix it. Gonna need a screwdriver for that. Again, using the 
castellated socket. Is good news. This little CV1 has still got its annular ring bearings in it, which is quite convenient because the set of fire blade forks I've got have also got annular ring ball bearings. They haven't been updated to uh, to taper to rock taper bearings, so I should be able to just for mocking up purposes obviously it will be getting new correct bearings nearer the time or during the rebuild I will actually give it fresh bearings but these old ones are perfectly adequate for mocking up And again, I'm only going to do things up hand tight. I'm not, not going to worry about tightening everything up because, of course, it's all going to come off in a couple of days' time when we complete when we finish stripping it down. Okay, let's try the forks for size. So this is the left hand one. Very conveniently, Honda actually do stamp on the inside of the, uh, the forks, which is the left and the right. So very helpful. the bottom yolks are even the same thickness so uh, <laughs> who would believe it I actually got that exactly right first time that never happens
now that I've got the first one in, it's always easier to measure from the top of the forks to the top of the yoke. Right, so that is the fire blade forks in. And the other thing I also bought Blade front mud guard. The problem is, I don't know if I really like it. It's a bit. You certainly compare the Fireblade one in black with the CB1 mud guard. Move back a bit so you can see better. Um, yeah, you can see the Fireblade one's quite fat and stubby. I actually prefer the CB1 mud guard. Uh, well, let's try the Fireblade one on and see how it looks. is the whole point of today is to mock things up and experiment right well I did hear a rumor that on the 98 to 99 fire blade which is what this mug guards off the the bottom yoke is actually alloy but the forks are slightly further apart. And the fact that these mudguard brackets don't want to work could actually show that that is the case. Of course it could be, but I'm trying to mount them wrong. Okay, so it's the following day and uh, I've spent quite a bit of time messing around with this, this Fireblade mudguard, trying to get it to fit. Now, I actually, when I bought it, it was marked up as a, a 98 to 99 Fireblade mudguard. Although it looks completely different to all the ones I've seen in the parts books, the ones in the parts books have a wider front end and there seems to be like some cooling slots just here. Um, but, yes, it's... it's it's definitely wider than the space between the forks at the moment where I'm using the earlier 92 to 97 fork uh, bottom yoke and sure enough the other thing I discovered on the internet was that the, the 98-99 model did move to an alloy bottom yoke and it looks just like this. So uh, yeah this mug guard isn't going to fit but I'm not too worried about that because I actually prefer the uh, the CV1 standard mug guard anyway it's kind of more in keeping with the the width of the, the standard wheel so I'm going to have to look at making that fit the other thing I discovered is that these little plastic clips that hold the front mug guard in place on the fire blade are the proverbial rocking horse droppings you cannot get these anywhere 
Um, they're certainly not available from Honda anymore, um, nor any of the, the usual sort of parts suppliers of obsolete Honda bits, uh, such as David Silver Spares or CMS NL. Um, so, uh, yeah, so if you've got a set of these, keep hold of them. They're, they're quite rare. Um, now, in order to fit the, the CV1 front mug guard, I'm going to have to source some different brackets and you can see quite clearly if I sit the, the CV1 mug guard over the top of the fire blade one you can see that the mounting holes on the fire blade are quite a bit further apart than they are on the CV1 so this bracket is never going to work um, there probably is enough room to sort of re-drill fresh holes in this bracket but given how rare they are, I'm going to keep them with the mud guard, uh, and that's going back on eBay. So uh, yes, I'm going to have to think of an alternative way of mounting the CV1 front mud guard. So I'm going to have to go away and do a little bit of thinking about that. And uh, yes, so whilst I uh, go away and think about that, uh, probably time to call that a a day on this this video. I'm sure there's there's plenty of footage and uh, we'll come back in the next video and we will have a look at fitting the front wheel and getting that space correctly and i'll show you what i'm planning to do with regard to the uh, the clip-ons and uh, and the front brake so until then thanks ever so much for watching uh, look after yourselves and i will see you in the next video